It's not a numbers problem. And I'm going to try to demonstrate to you now that this is not a selling problem. And uh, before you turn out the light, Bob, just let me make a little bit of explanation. Uh, there are certain words that are analogous or homologous, maybe, but uh, light and enlightened men, huh? and ignorance and darkness. Huh? And what I'm going to try to demonstrate to you this morning is that uh, 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 darkness has absolutely no resistance to light. And by the same token, ignorance doesn't have a resistance to enlightened men. Huh? So, uh, if you'll turn out the light there, <coughs> I'll, I'll try to give you this demonstration. I hope. Yep. Okay, turn around, Bob. I'm holding in my hand here a wee candle. I would like to call to your attention that every single eye in this room is on this wee candle. If there is an exception, please raise your right hand. <laughs> now I want to issue a challenge. I would like to see anyone increase the light in this room by distributing or marketing or selling this wee candle. I don't have to wait for an answer. It is obvious that it cannot be done. What then is the purpose of this wee candle? Well, maybe there's just enough light here, there is, for one standing right here to find and light his own candle in which case the light in this room would be increased 100%, which is better than you can do in the stock market. Uh, 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 now then, uh, those two may make it possible for a few others right nearby to find and light their own candles. And it might go on till everybody in this room had uh, lit their candles, in which case there'd be a light enough in this room to read a book or maybe even to write one. Uh, as I told you, once upon a time, I was a general manager of the Los Angeles Chamber. And in our city, we had a place called the Los Angeles Coliseum. It held 100 and holds 110,000 people. In one night, it was a bright night. It was a, a clear night, but no, uh, no moon. And the 110,000 people, the master's ceremony is about 10 p.m. Uh, at a given signal, the whole 110,000 people struck a little match. It was just like daylight, don't you see? That's how this works. The darkness has no resistance to light. And I'm going to demonstrate this by uh, asking you to watch how the darkness sneaks out of this room as the light is increased. I can already see some of you in the front row. Hmm? I can see all of you in the back row. He says it has no resistance whatsoever. What is it that's kind of interesting about this? Well, uh, why is it attractive? Suppose, for example, that you had to stay in the room with the light there. What would happen to you? You'd go to sleep. Uh, if it were there and you had to stay here, you'd go to sleep. What is it then that makes this fascinating, attractive? It's this, a point I was trying to make in my lecture. It's this business of growth. Here's what it is, and this is all it is. See it? You know, I was doing this lecture one day in Aurora, Ohio, and one of these points, a uh, uh, stupid thought flashed into my mind. Reed, I wonder why it is that, um, this all took a second for the whole thing. I wonder why it is that uh, ignorance doesn't disperse uh, by reason of my enlightenment. Of course, the answer came in a flash of a second. Uh, here, I, I got news for you. Here's Reed's light. But let me get it up to there, huh? And there might be one or two. Or there, well, maybe that's as high as I can go. But don't you, you get the point? In other words, the higher it is, the more attractive it is. The more, the more it grows, this is it. It's the growth. I don't care whether, it doesn't make any difference, folks. Uh, turn the light on, Bob. It doesn't make any difference whether you are growing from this level or this level or that level. It is growth that makes all the difference in the world. That's what it is, and that's all it is. For a few examples of what I mean, uh, here's this guy, 
Anderson, and you had here Aunt Senholz. Both of those fellows are aviators, huh? And so they're flying at night, and down here is a beacon light. You want to know something? That beacon light cannot see them, but they can see it. I may apprehend the wisdom of a Shakespeare. That wisdom does not know that Leonard Reed exists. Is that not right? Or if you want some proof of this further, go to nature and take a look at uh, those animals committed to the depths of the ocean or underground animals. They have no eyes to see. But over evolutionary time, as they move toward the surface, their eyes develop. Huh? Sure they do. There's an old English axiom. It's absolutely beautiful. It is light that brings forth the eye. So if you want to bring forth the perception of others, the formula is simple. Just see how much enlightenment you can acquire and share.